broadcast globally. Yes. Isn't it? Yep. Okay. Uh, good. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Wherever you are. Uh, my name is Tom. I am one of the regional managers here at Aston University, and for the first time uh, in doing a live broadcast, you can see we've got no background. I am actually here in the office, which is very nice indeed. So it's an absolute pleasure to be here talking with you today. Um, I'm going to kind of walk through uh, some of the concerns that we know students have got right now, some of the things that Aston's doing, bits about the courses here, some of the support we've got, um, and uh, from that then we'll be able to move on uh, to an announcement about a special event that we've got coming tomorrow. So a few bits that we're going to talk about, which is really, really nice. Um, but but yeah, first of all, so so I'm, I'm here, I'm one of the regional managers, so I, I look after students coming to Aston from Europe, from South Asia and from Latin America. So um, yeah, very, very lucky to have that job. As I said, I am here in the office, so uh, nobody else is here. Um, which is kind of weird today. It's a bit sad, but I've been in the other the, the other day, and there was about half a dozen of us in the office. So um, I think one of the things that you know students have been coming to us with questions about and concerns about is kind of what's the COVID situation like in the UK, because it's it's become very different. I think we're all very aware that the COVID situation is very different now country by country. Some places have got more strict restrictions in place um, and some places are returning or return to normal. Um, so, you know, we've been back in the office now for a couple of months. We have got students coming into the campus for classes as well. Um, not all classes, it's not a normal timetable as it was before the pandemic yet. Um, but we're working back towards that, hopefully. So, and, you know, as long as the UK continues on a good path where the number of cases are going down, I think we'll continue seeing that uh, grow over time. Um, but, you know, we've got a number of students that I work with, especially from, from South Asia, um, are very concerned because of quarantining and because of things they're hearing about red listing and, and that kind of thing. So currently... Uh, the position is that if you're coming to the UK from a red list country, you are required to quarantine for 10 days in a UK government approved quarantine hotel. Um, and that comes with a cost of £1,700, £1,750 roughly. Um, so there are universities doing different things to support students in that position who are going to have to do that quarantine in order to come to the university. So what Aston has got is a red list welcome grant. Um, and that's a £500 tuition fee reduction for those students who have to quarantine and who can show that they've quarantined in a hotel. Um, so that's something that we are doing to support students interested in Aston. And we hope that that helps the students who've got that extra burden to bear, um, along with some of the other things that we've been doing to support all of our students um, over the past couple of months. So, and I'll talk a little bit more about some of that in a minute, things like CMI that we've done. But this is <clears throat> specifically for those students who are going to quarantine. Now, if you say coming from an amber list country, um, you would be able to quarantine <clears throat> in your student accommodation. So still 10 days, um, but you, when you fly, when you land into the UK, you can travel to your student accommodation and quarantine there, wherever it is that you plan to live normally as a student. Um, and there's, then there's the green list countries who have got a different set of requirements again. Okay. Um, for those students wanting of, of, you know, coming who are from red list countries, uh, who are vaccinated, there have been some specific questions around, well, you know, what about me? I've, I've got my vaccine. I've had both doses of my vaccine. Do I need to quarantine? And unfortunately, the answer is yes, you do need to quarantine still, um, which is unfortunate, but you can still transmit the virus. You could pick the virus up on the flight, get to your accommodation and transmit it to one of your flatmates. We all know that you wouldn't want to do that. And so, COVID quarantining when you get to the UK is essential and complying with the restrictions and the, the guidance that you've got here in the UK is essential to ensure that we keep the campus healthy. And keeping the campus healthy 
is essential to getting back to face-to-face -face classes, which is something we all know that people want. Um, so for, for booking the quarantine, what you need to do, once you've got, uh, once you're planning to come to the UK, you need to go onto the government website to book one of your quarantine hotels, um, which is, you know, quite straightforward. It's not too difficult to do. Um, and that allows you that booking then so that when you get to the UK, you can go to your quarantine hotel. So I hope that's a bit clearer for people who that affects. Now, <clears throat> there's concerns about vaccines and things like that for people. Um, but I think you ha have to consider um, what exactly the vaccine is going to allow for everyone to do. So we've got on the campus here today, we've got a pop-up vaccine center where students are able to go and get the Pfizer vaccine and that's really important it's been opened up now in the UK to over 18s it's been opened up in many countries to over 18s um, and by having that vaccine it should help you to not not get as bad a case of COVID if you do and it is proving effective against things like um, different variants that are coming out as well to some extent so that's really important and in terms of the on-campus safety and testing uh, which is what I wanted to come to next. That's a really important piece of what we want to talk about today. So when you come onto the campus here in the UK, um, so that what I've had to do, for example, there is a test centre on the campus where you can go and complete a lateral flow test, which gives you a quick indication of if, you've, if you're carrying COVID or potentially infectious or not. It's very easy to do. We've got an online booking system. So uh, you just have to go on, select what day you're coming to campus and, and pick a time. So um, you want to allow a bit of bit of time. I normally sort of book about 45 minutes before whatever is the start of my day so that I've got time to go to the test centre, do my test, and then move on and come to wherever it is I am on the campus on that day. Um, and it's very easy to do, just swabbing at the back of your throat and then up the nose. And it's, the for me, I don't know, different people react differently to it but for me it's the up the nose bit it just tickles my nose hairs. um but you know it's quick and easy it's painless really it, it you know and it gives you an indication of if you're going to be a risk to people that you're going to be around or not um so that's been really important and really useful thing that we have here that allows people then to come into the university buildings um so we're very lucky that we've got that and we and you know you can also pick up and this is what I personally do to pick up then some lateral flow tests and then I've got some at home so I take my test the night before as well if I'm coming in just to make sure that I'm okay so there's there's lots of things there in terms of safety and then when you get into the campus itself into the main building um you've got on the floor you've got arrows showing you where to go the and one of the features of our campus as well, we've got quite a large brick building, many floors, uh, lots of stairs, lots of elevators and, and lifts and, and that type of thing. So um, you've got some staircases that will be designated up staircases and you've got some that will be designated down staircases. The part of the building I'm in, you can only access by one set of staircases and that's an up staircase. <laughs> so this is fine, but it does mean I have to do this rather crazy thing of when I need the toilet, I have to go up and out the stairs to go to the loo, and then I have to go into another part of the building and around and find a down staircase and come back down. It takes a bit longer, but it keeps everybody safer, so it's well worthwhile. Um, there's lots of hand sanitizing stations around as well, uh, which makes it easy, quick and convenient for you just to get some gel, clean your hands, and then your hands are clean is very important and we've got in the lifts as well we've got restrictions so only two people in a lift uh right now which is you know i've not found that problem at all i've gone to meetings with colleagues and you know we, we found it very easy to do um so yeah i think all in all very very good in terms of then classrooms and this is one of the things that has been a challenge for universities in reinstating teaching you know, we used to clean the classrooms at the end of each day. Uh, so that for the next day, people come in and you could have one class into another, into another, maximize the efficiency of a classroom, right? Um, but nowadays, one of the thing, challenges we've got is we need to clean that classroom between every class. So that's added on for every class that we run, there's an extra half an hour 
where the cleaning team can get in, give the classroom a good clean down, make sure it's nice and clean and ready and, and disinfected and whatever, ready for the next class to go in. So steps like that are things that we're doing practically to allow teaching to safely take place again. We've obviously had to prioritize certain courses um, so there are there are courses. Uh, let me give you an example, like a mechanical engineering course or a medicine course. Um, you know, I, we can teach those courses only so much um, using some of the online methods available. And then the lab activities, it's really essential that they get back into the classroom. So we have been trying to reopen those up as a priority to make sure those students get that hands on practical lab experience that's kind of it defines the Aston experience, if you like. All of our all of our courses are incredibly uh, practical and focused, and our students leave with real hands-on skills. So we're very very lucky in that regard um, to be able to do that. We've got quite spacious labs. If it, you know, if we could, if I could pick this laptop up and just be wandering about freely, I could take you through like the chemical engineering or the mechanical labs. Um, and they're quite big, spacious rooms, so quite well ventilated. So they're quite safe to work in, actually. Um, so that kind of, I think, covers most of the on-campus safety and testing things that we we're going to talk about. So the different colleges that we've got here at Aston, um, we've got a College of Business and Social Sciences, a College of Engineering and Physical Science, and the College of Health and Life Sciences. And so these, these different colleges um, cover their different specialities. In the Business and Social Sciences, it's probably our largest college. Um, it's probably got some of our most well-reputed programs. Our MBA, for example, it's a top 100 MBA program in the world. Our uh, business and management MSc top 100 in the world again. And you see many courses like um, business analytics, for example, which I think is ranked third in the UK. Um, so <clears throat> some really great, incredible courses there. Um, and, it, you know, the focus that I mentioned earlier, the emphasis on, on that practical teaching. I gave you examples there of, say, engineering and sciences, which are easier for people to understand often. But in terms of getting practical experience on those business courses, we managed to achieve this um, for our undergraduates with placement years, something that's not compulsory for a student, but um, unless they're from the UK. So for an Indian student, it's optional. You could bypass this if you wanted to. I don't know why you'd want to, but um, you can. So the placement year works in that you come and do the first two years of your bachelor's degree. Then you have a year where you can go into industry or you can go on a study abroad scheme or a combination of two. And then you have your final year. Um, so, so that's a really nice scheme. And actually, that's how I came to this job, because I was looking to try something a bit different. I did a placement year in an international recruitment team with this international recruitment team, actually uh, loved it. Did a couple of visits to Africa and I was hooked. And as soon as I graduated, I came to work in this role uh, as soon as I could. So that was that was um, my kind of experience of a placement year. But I know some students who've done, um, say, a study abroad, they've gone and lived in another country for the year and experienced the culture. I had a friend of mine, he went to Hong Kong where he did his placements year and uh, he got really into sevens rugby while he was out there uh, because it's it's they have a big tournament every year and stuff. Um, so that was really, really exciting for him. We've also, um, at postgrad, we also have that practical experience built into the course in our Aston Global uh, Advantage scheme. So, so this gives students, um, <clears throat> yes, the chance to do an intern, but I'll come to that in a minute. It gives them the chance during their course um, to participate in something called the Aston Business Clinic, which is where with some of the SMEs that we work with, our students would go out and they would, they would meet with these businesses and they would come to understand a problem that a business is facing um, and they would prepare like a consulting report on, on the problem, on a solution for them, uh, which is really, really, really great experience for any aspiring consultants out there um, and gives the students a really good chance to see and observe and understand the operation of a British SME and, and the potential challenges it faces which I think is a really valuable lesson for students to take on in whichever 
walk of life they, they find themselves in when they graduate. So we have that, which is great. Um, there's also the opportunity to do virtual internships, something we've invested more heavily in during the pandemic, um, because we found that many of these experiences help develop a lot of skills in students that ordinary study has not developed in them. Um, sort of a comfortable, um, a, a comfort with online meetings, for example, uh, you know, understanding how to work in across time zones. So um, something every time because uh, we have we work with I have a team in Delhi that I work with and every time we have a new star to come to the team there's always a little breaking in period where they get used to scheduling meetings in across time zones and uh, you know I've more than once I've had an invite to a meeting um, that's at like 11 o'clock in the morning in India and it which means it's like six o'clock in the morning in the UK I've just sort of replied I mean like no we're not doing this so you know these kind of life lessons these kind of practical skills really help the students when they graduate the fact that they've done these virtual internships so um that's a really great scheme there's things like mentoring there as well and study abroad which we've talked about already and then there's the opportunity to extend the course by a year to do an internship so um that's that's what we call the extended uh, global advantage route and, that, and that's really really good for the students as well gives them a real in-depth insight into an industry or a job role that they may be considering um, and helps them to understand that either yes this is the role for me or perhaps no but perhaps they've learned from this experience what they want to go on and do when they graduate so that also is really valuable we have um, our College of Engineering and Physical Sciences that I've mentioned that. Now this is a, you know, um, a department that's really exciting. It's kind of one of those subjects I wish I'd been good at maths and physics and things for, because I think some of the stuff that they teach there is just so cool. Um, so like this year, they've got new courses in sustainable engineering and future vehicles technologies. Now I'm like, I think the car that I drive, we don't need to worry about future vehicles technology. <laughs> I haven't got any futuristic things in my car right now, but I'm looking at maybe changing that and, and I'm looking at some of the things that you've got and some of the, the engine options, some of the fuel options, some of the driver assistance technologies that these new cars got and it's staggering, it's so cool um, and I think it's really going to make a difference to people's lives um, and you, you, you know, my role, I'm really lucky I get to visit places like India quite regularly. Um, but I quite often visit India in November, uh, which is kind of just as we're coming out of the part where the, the farmers have been crop burning and, and there's a lot of smog in the air, a lot of pollution in the air. Um, and it's not just that. I mean, there's the traffic as well and all of the other things, of course. Um, but it, it elevates it at that point. You become very aware of it at that point. And I think some of these future, future vehicle technologies that the... the, the the advances that they can make and the contribution they can make to society and life in, in cleaner air is only a good thing, only a good thing. So I think that's a really exciting thing. Like they, they do have as well, like the business school, that internship option. Uh, so you, sometimes you see our courses, you'll have say um, data analytics or data analytics, including professional practice. And it's that including professional practice part that comes with that extra year for the student to do an internship. So that's, that's really quite cool as well, that they get the chance to do that. And that's another subject actually that's really coming up, you know, data analytics, artificial intelligence. Aston's got a lot of expertise in this and a lot, some really interesting courses in this. And so it's, you know, again, I wish my mind worked more mathematically. <laughs> I could have perhaps had the chance to do some of these things as well. Um, but then we come, you know, lastly to our College of Health and Life Sciences, and that's where our pharmacy, our psychology courses all sit. Um, and then these courses are so good. The um, optometry department, for example, at Aston, I think it's something like three or four out of the world's top 10 experts in myopia are based in Aston, working, teaching, and, and we're so lucky to have them. The students, they get really, really hand, you know, to, to really experience what it's like to be an optometrist or to be a pharmacist. We've got on the campus, they've got treatment rooms. So if I wanted to, I could go and book an eye check with 
the optometrists here on the campus and it would take hours, but it would be the most thorough eye check you ever get. Um, and it, if the students are there with their academic supervising and performing the different texts. So that's really cool. Um, and, it, you know, just part of the life at Aston. And, the, you know, at Aston as well, something we're really keen on is, it, it, you know, and I've talked about the import, the, the, the practical skills that we tried to develop in people over there. That's about leading them to employment. Okay. And we're really keen that our students get the best employable opportunities they can. So we have on campus careers fairs arranged by our careers and placements team. Um, and that takes place. We have access for the students to some really interesting career sessions, actually. Um, so when you come and start, if you come to Aston, you should all want to come to Aston. If you come and start, go and check out what the careers team have got planned because they've had really fascinating sessions in the past with big name companies, but you will know and um, people from their HR department coming in to tell you perhaps a bit about, you know, what's a career in insurance like, or what's a career in um, investment banking actually like. So all of these things that really help them to understand what employers are looking for. And that's one of the reasons Aston's got such great employment support, but it's more than that as well. We really do a lot here at the university to look after the student in, in, in totality. So we've got um, the, the hub, which is, it's not very inventive a name, but the hub is our hub of student support services. So if you've got questions you want to ask about your visa, or if you've got questions about perhaps an academic point on, on the course, perhaps uh, understanding like an exam regulation or something, or if you have an additional learning need, like I have dyslexia, so I went to see them, for example. Um, you know, these types of things, it's all in the one space. So it's steady. If you think you need a bit of support, you just go to the hub and you say, hey, I think I need help with this. And uh, there'll be somebody that they can connect you with that will be able to help you out, which is a really good service to have. Um, and it's not just the university that provides that support it's the students union as well so the students union have got an advice and representation center there that's independent of the university can help guide students perhaps through any issues that they might have with the university um there's there's people in there like our new president balraj who has worked in the students union for a year already uh, looking after the clubs and societies and he's really keen to grow the opportunities that students have while they're with us so so there's all of that taking place as well and the students union is is gorgeous it's it's absolutely gorgeous a great glass building um nice areas in there for students to meet and just kind of chill out and stuff good meeting rooms um which get used for for prayers for events for these types of things so all of that going on as well um and then, you know, there's things that we do there before the students even join. So Aston University, many of its courses are accredited. Um, and, and what that means is that a professional body, you know, because people throw that term around accreditation, accreditation. It means an external body has done a quality check on, on the university and that it's approved the courses as meeting that quality standard. Uh, so if we take, say... The Institute of Mechanical Engineering. They have uh, come in, they've reviewed our mechanical engineering courses, um, and they have said, yes, these courses provide a good education, good training for a student, um, and they meet this much of our of our um, of our exams because normally with a chartered organization they would have their own qualifications that people can do such as for the, the one that a lot of people know would be the accounting bodies you know acca cima everybody knows chartered accountancy right but you can have chartered engineers you can have chartered hr managers chartered marketers uh, and one of the things that we do with our students each we've done the last couple of intakes now is that before they start we're doing something called the Chartered Institute of Management Level 7 Award in Strategy and Leadership. And we made this available for all of our students uh, at postgrad level that were starting with us this September. So we have got engineers, we have got health scientists, we have got marketeers, we have got supply chain managers, all doing this online course now 
Um, and these are students that are only going to start in September, but they're working through this online course now before they start. So when they start at Aston, they'll already have gained a qualification. And for those students looking to do the internship, that will be really valuable. So, you know, these accreditations, they have, they can be valuable to you when you study and they will be valuable to you when you go on throughout your career. And they tell you that you're coming on to a real quality course, which is really important. So I think think that kind of brings us towards a close one of the things that I really wanted to to make sure everybody knew about was that tomorrow with IDP we're doing a session with our program directors where students are going to get the chance to have a chat with the program directors about the specific courses um, so if you've got an offer for Aston if you and you might still have an offer for another university. You might be considering Aston and other universities, or you might be certain that you want to come to Aston. But if you want to have a chat with your program director to really understand perhaps the detail of your course, perhaps what specific modules are like, or how they teach certain topics, or you know these types of questions, what what kind of software am I going to use, or do I need this type of laptop if you're coming on computing? Um, then, yeah. You can come, you can meet with the program directors then, and they'll be able to have that conversation with you. So hopefully, hopefully you'll come. And I believe that you should be able to see the, the link for that in the chat box, which I think brings us quite nicely to a close. I'm not sure if there were any questions or anything like that. Uh, no, Tom, um, I guess uh, we'll be getting questions a little later as the session is currently live on uh, Facebook. So no thanks a lot for taking out your time and uh, doing this session. It was, I believe it was uh, very much useful for all the students who are watching this now. I'll just uh, reiterate the same point. Uh, tomorrow, three to five, we'll be having the program directors from Aston University from different departments to come and talk to the students. So if you are interested, if you have any queries, uh, the link is in the description. You can click on the link tomorrow and you can join us there. So thanks once again, Tom, for this session. And uh, we look forward to meeting you tomorrow. Brilliant. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone. You too. Thank you.